What's going on everybody? My name's Greg Peters. You are tuned into the Car Passion channel. And today, I'm gonna be installing the cylinder head and test fitting the turbo and the manifold on the VVT engine. Before you begin, it is very important that you get the surface of your block and the surface of your head very, 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 very clean. Since I'm running ARP head studs on this engine, installing these is gonna be my first step. Just like the ARP main studs, you're gonna install these with the hex facing up and just thread them in by hand. There's no need to tighten them down. Don't forget to put some ARP lube onto the threads before putting them into the block. Since you did install the studs with grease, you might get a little bit of overspill like that on the block. Just wanna go through with some brake cleaner and a rag and make sure that the block surface again is spotless before you drop on the head gasket. Next, I'm ready to drop on my head gasket, but first I wanna talk about something that probably not everybody knows about, and it's a pretty important decision to make when you're building a 1.8, whether it's uh, earlier 94, 95, all the way up to a 2005. Now I'm sure many of you are familiar with the coolant reroute where you run your upper radiator hose to the back of your head, properly rerouting the coolant through the motor the way that Mazda originally engineered it. Well, in 2001, Mazda made a little change to the motor to try to negate the need for a coolant reroute. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So here's the bottom of my head and this is the front here. Now what I want you to pay attention to are these two little coolant journals right here. What Mazda did when the NB2 came out, which had the VVT engine, is they took the head gasket and you see these journals right here? When you put the head gasket on, they just straight up blocked off those journals so no coolant can flow through them in an attempt to push more coolant to the back of the engine. If you run a coolant reroute on a VVT engine, you have the head gasket forcing more coolant to the back, and then you also have the reroute forcing more coolant to the back, and you're shorting the front cylinders of coolant. I have a friend that built his engine like that with a VVT head gasket and a reroute, and his car would overheat just cruising on the freeway. When he pulled the reroute off and went back to the stock hose routing, he could beat on his car on the track and have no coolant issues. So the other option is to run an earlier head gasket with a reroute, and that is what I'm doing. So what I've got here is the Cometic head gasket, and as you can see, it's got the openings for those coolant journals, and the coolant will flow just like all of the earlier 1.8s, and I'm gonna be running a reroute on this engine. From what I hear, that is the best way to do it, so I'm gonna go ahead and try it out and see how it works. Now when I bought my Cometic head gasket, it didn't give me the option to buy an early style or a late style, I just assumed that it would be the early style. But that's not really something you want to assume on, so if you have your head gasket handy, you can just look here and tell it's got those two extra holes in the middle, and that is an early style head gasket, so if you run this, you want to do a reroute. One other bit of prep I'm gonna do before I drop the head on is put the ARP washers into their place before I put the head on the studs. If you drop the head onto the studs, the washer won't fit between the, uh, the, lifter, the lifter buckets here. So you have to put the washers on first and then drop the head on. Put it onto a screwdriver like this. I'm gonna carefully drop the screwdriver into the hole that the stud goes through. Drop the washer on and just like that, I'll do that to the rest. And then just remember to pick the head up slowly, carefully and straight so the washers don't go flying everywhere.
I got down here and I checked to make sure that the head was sitting flat on the block. And as you can see, there's a tiny little gap there. It's not sitting flat. So I'm going, uh, okay, why is it not sitting flat? That little coolant line is resting on my engine stand. So I got to reconfigure the engine stand a little bit to get that head to sit perfectly flat and then we'll torque it down. The head tightening procedure that I'm going to be using is I'm going to tighten all of these nuts to 25 foot pounds in sequence and then tighten them all to 45 and then to 65. Then I'm going to crack them all loose in the reverse sequence and then do that three step process over again. I got my little torquing pattern here right on my phone. And keep in mind that if you're using the stock head bolts, those numbers are gonna be different. If you need the torque specifications for your entire Miata engine, just follow the link below to my website and I have PDF manuals that will tell you exactly how tight to make every nut and bolt on this whole thing. So the head is installed. For those of you that didn't catch the parts overview video, it's a relatively stock head. It's got stock cams. The only upgrades are it's got a set of valve springs in it, uh, slightly upgraded, slightly stiffer. Mild port work, stage one is what they called it. It's pretty much just fixing up some of the factory castings and just cleaning up the uh, cleaning up the bend, making it, making it a little bit smoother shot into the cylinder. Nothing major, but I figure it will help. So some of you guys have probably noticed that I have not installed the oil pan yet, and that's because I still have to drill and tap for the oil return line off the turbo, but I couldn't do that until I got the turbo and the manifold and got the head installed. Now that all three of those things are done, I can mock it up and run my oil line, but I really just want to see how mean the turbo is going to look on that low mount Artec manifold. Right there is why Artec needed my turbo to build the manifold. That is probably a quarter inch clearance from the block. That is just beautiful right there. Cannot wait to see this thing in action. It's gonna be a good time. This is gonna be, this is gonna be a real good time. All right guys, well I sincerely hope that you enjoy this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, don't forget to drop a thumbs up and let me know what you thought down in the comments below. I will see you in the next one. Peace out. Back from the dead.